Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be drawing another animal together. I was so excited to see how many of you all watched the How to Draw an Octopus video, and a lot of you sent in the amazing octopuses that you drew, so let's take a look at a couple of those. Look at these beautiful octopuses. This octopus is named Olive. This one is named Harmony, and I love them. Truly gorgeous. Thank you so much for sending these photos. So today we are going to be drawing another one of my favorite animals. This is my all-time favorite reptile. What we are going to be drawing together is the New Mexico Whiptail Lizard. Now, if you live in New Mexico, you have all seen this lizard before. Long tail, the blue bellies, you're always trying to catch them. Instead of trying to catch a lizard today, we're just gonna draw one. Let's get started drawing our lizard. And while you're following along with me, I'll let you in on some pretty cool facts about the New Mexico Whiptail Lizard and why they're my most favorite reptile. Tile. All right, ladies, here's what you're going to need to draw your New Mexico Whiptail Lizard. You're going to need a pencil with an eraser, colored pencils, crayons, or markers, dark brown and yellow for the stripes, black for the outline, blue for the belly, and then of course some paper. All right, so to start drawing our lizard, we're going to be in the lower right quadrant of our paper, and we are going to begin by drawing the eye. Your eye is going to be a teardrop shape. And something about lizards is that they have eyelids, just like us, they can blink. But as you can see, I just gave my reptile some eyelids. It looks like it's, it's wide awake. The next step is starting the body of our whiptail lizard. So you're gonna go about an inch away from the eye, and that's gonna be sort of the point of its face. And you're going to make a really long loop around like so and maybe you can all tell but this is going to become its tail and this is going to become its body an important thing to remember when you're drawing the body of your lizard like we just did is you want it to be long if you draw it too short it's going to end up looking like a tadpole and i know this from experience Next, we are going to finalize our tail and our body by starting at the tail. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you start really skinny. And as you move along the tail, you're getting wider. And that is the body of our lizard. Nice job, ladies. All right, next up, we are going to give our friend some dimension. We're going to start at the point of its nose area, you could say, the front of its head. All right, so starting at the front of its face, we're just going to start bringing out this line all along the back. Eventually, it's going to meet the line of this curve kind of where it starts turning into the tail. And now we're just gonna add a couple more details to the, to the head of our lizard. We're going to add its other eye by just drawing a really tiny little mound and coloring it in. And then here, we're going to draw the ear of the lizard. It's just a really small little hole. Doesn't really look like human ears. And then finally, a little a little nostril. All right, so now your lizards should be looking a little bit like a, like a tiny snake, but not for very much longer because we're about to give our lizard some limbs. Where its eyes and its ears and its nose are, you're going to draw its front arm. We're going to do a 90 degree angle, like so. Once again, going from narrow to wide. And we're gonna give it its little claws. Is that what you call these? They have five of them. One, two, three, four, five, perfect. And then this is why we have our eraser. We're just going to erase this line that we went over. And then again, to give it some dimension, we're just going to draw a mound over here as if the arm is coming from behind. Now we're onto the back legs of our lizard, and instead of doing the smaller 90 degree angles that we did for the front arms of our lizard, we're going to do a larger, more of a zigzag acute angle, kind of like a frog getting ready to leap. 
The feet of our lizards are super funky and I'll show you why. Just like on the front, it's going to have five toes. One, two, three. But when you get to the fourth one, it's gonna be super long. Yep. I think that they have this, I think that they have this one really long toe because it helps them crawl over the rocky, sandy surfaces of the New Mexico terrain, but I'm honestly not sure. So if you guys figure that out, let me know. And then we're just gonna go back up following that angle that we made. Erasing that line. And there you go, there's the one back leg. We are going to try to draw the exact same thing on the other side. So to help you figure out where your other leg should go, try to draw a, draw one line that follows the direction of where this leg is pointing, and then just make sort of an obtuse angle out of it. Draw a line going that way. And your, and your other leg should hit along that line. So let's, let's see if I can, let's see if that works for me. Does that look right? I think so. One second, we're gonna do the one, two, three, four, five. Bring it back up. Oh, I did it. And then you can just erase any lines that you don't want in your, in your final drawing. All right, now we have the complete outline of our whiptail lizard. So as you ladies know, our whiptail lizard is a striped lizard and the stripes aren't gonna go all the way down to its tail. So I'm drawing this rainbow arc to show where I'm going to stop drawing the stripes. There's no exact number of stripes you need to draw on your lizard, but the first one to draw should be the one starting at the top of your lizard's back. And as you can see, I'm going to start from the arc and move down along that line, following it all the way to the top of its head. The next stripe you're going to draw is going to start around its ear. So that little hole that you drew for its ear, you're going to start drawing your stripe right there. And then as you can see, I'm just going to continue drawing the stripe all the way up its body until I get to that arc that I drew so I know where to stop. Drawing another line going down the one that you just drew so it actually creates a stripe. And there you go. Now all of the other stripes you draw are going to land in between that first and second stripe that you drew. So once again, it doesn't matter how many stripes you draw, but just making sure that they all go in between that first and second stripe. And that is the complete outline of your lizard. Let's add some color. The first step to adding color to my lizard is going to be going over all of those lines that I just drew in a black color pencil. You could use a pen, whatever you want to do. And now I'm going to tell you something so extremely cool about this species of lizard. Every single New Mexico whiptail lizard is female, which basically means that all of these lizards have the same exact organs inside of their bodies. Reproducing for these lizards is not dependent on mating with a male lizard who has totally different organs, but every year there are more whiptails running around. So this species and some other species of plants and animals are just reproducing in a totally different way than we're used to hearing about. And I'm wondering what everybody is thinking about this species that is so different than our own. Why do these lizards look and act the way they do? Why do we act and look the way that we do? And what happened over time that made our species so different from theirs? And what about this lizard makes it so that it is able to survive in the New Mexico climate? What does it mean that this lizard has yellow stripes and a blue belly and a really long tail? What could be the benefits of this lizard being able to reproduce without the help of a mate? To me, it sounds like they probably live a pretty independent lifestyle, and I wonder what you all think that's like for them. And then if lizards developed all of those characteristics to be able to survive, what are the characteristics that humans have that help us survive? And during these times where resilience feels really important, 
I'm wondering what characteristics you might like to have that would make you feel more prepared for these weird and different and confusing times. And I'm not talking about like more toilet paper or medicine or a Disney Plus account. Here I am talking about characteristics of the mind and the body. The whiptail lizard has a small body and is super fast so that it can hide from its predators. Maybe you would want to have that too and then you can just go hide out under a rock and take some me time. Or maybe you have a heightened sense of smell and you can smell germs from super far away and then you're able to avoid them. And there's really no way for you to be able to suddenly do any of those things, but there are lots of things that you all can do to make yourself feel safe and healthy and protected during this time when we're all staying at home. Whew, that was a lot of questions and a lot to think about, but as you guys can see this whole time, I've been coloring in my whiptail lizard, yellow and brown stripes on its back. I'm sort of giving some blue accents. And now I'm just finishing up by adding some brown to its legs. Now my lizard is all colored in and I've decided to name them Willow. All right, there is my finished drawing of a New Mexico whiptail lizard. Last fun fact about this reptile is that it is the state lizard of New Mexico. Not all states have state lizards, but New Mexico is just cool like that. Can't wait to see everybody's drawings. I hope you have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video.